a tragic accident, and a supernatural encounter. Bruce Van Natta shares about dying, what he saw, and the miracle of being alive today. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell. Stay up to date on all of our latest posts. In a single moment, everything can change. The closing of one chapter, the beginning of something new, where miracles become reality and we get a glimpse of what lies beyond, the place where heaven meets earth. Well, are miracles real, and does anything really exist beyond this life? Well, today's guest personally discovered the answers to these questions when a tragic accident literally crushed the life out of him. This is one story you don't want to miss, but first join me around the table is my dear friend, April Simons. Incredible story today. Yes, and miracles are real, and I love hearing these. Such an encouragement. It is. Dorothy Newton, are you ready? I'm ready. You're always ready, aren't you? Yes, <laughs> beautiful course. today. Thank you. So Thank you. Good to have you here. Thank you. Rachel Lamb Brown is back at the table. Yay. She's been a world traveler. Are you a little jet lagged? I am, was jet lagged last night, and yeah. Judah Bray was jet lagged last night. So I was sleeping, and then he woke me up, and I could not go back to sleep. Oh, so no. it was a little rough, but. Yeah. Look how beautiful she looks. Look yeah. <laughs> I know. You recovered well. Thank you. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? Oh, great, thank you. We love miraculous oh my testimonies. Goodness. I'm so excited <laughs> because we get reminded of the bigness of our God. Yes, we do. Well, he is the founder of Sweet Bread Ministries, and he's here to share his incredible story with us. Please welcome Bruce Venata. Da da, there he is. Hello, folks. ladies. So Hi. good to have you. It's been a while. Thank you. How many years has it been since? Four you? years. <laughs> you know what? I was going through my my phone on uh, looking at pictures, and your your picture came up where you have the, that scar. Yeah. Well, it would be a day he would never forget. A massive semi truck crushing the very life out of him. But what led to this moment, and how would this change his life forever? Well, Bruce is here today to tell us more about that. Okay, so. I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit in your testimony. I know you were uh, you were raised in a Christian home. Or? My parents believed in God, but yep. it, it was a rough home. Would, you know, yeah. Mm. You had some, some dysfunction, traumatic some dysfunction things there. that happened yeah. to you as a little boy. Yeah. Repeatedly um, molested by some babysitters. Yeah. And so uh, growing up, your kind of idea of God was maybe, you know, a little All, What I knew of God was the one time I'd been to Sunday school with my grandpa and grandma. As far as like Jesus and the story of him hugging the children, that's what I knew of Jesus. And what happened in that story? Where the spot where Jesus said, uh, let the children come unto me. And yeah. that, you know, fast forward several months. And I didn't believe it that, that Sunday school time, but uh, fast forward several months. And I called out to Jesus one night in a traumatic night. And I just said, Jesus, if you're real, come and hug me. Like you did those kids in that story, prove yeah. it. And what happened? He immediately hugged me. So Liquid lo love. It was liquid like love. Like you, you saw him? I felt it. Felt I was picked up. I was laying on a bed. I was picked How up off the bed. You? Five. Wow. Okay, so he picked you picked up. Picked me up off the bed, pulled me into his chest, and he wrapped his arms around me oh, like wow. this. I was being held like this. But it was, like I said, Such liquid a love. Supernatural, yeah. but yeah. yet you yeah. could feel it. Oh, wow. completely. Yeah, I didn't see him, but I definitely okay. feel it. So Woke up the next morning and said, there's something to the Jesus thing. There's something to the Jesus thing. Yeah. Okay, so fast forward, and um, you actually got born again when? You know, people ask that question all the time. I, I always go back to the night of being hugged by Jesus. Yeah. Despite how I lived the next that's when, however many that's years. That's when you accepted yeah. him. But when did your life kind of more line up with the word oh, of God? Oh, once, as we got married and started getting, you know, uh, my wife became a believer. We started going to church. You know, I started having kids, all that. Get closer, closer, closer. My wife was working at the church. Um, Y'all were doing Bible studies? Yeah, and we started, we started doing Bible studies. And, okay, so let's yeah. go to the day. In fact, I guess the night before, she felt so strongly yeah. that there was a call in your life that y'all had a conversation. Mm, argument. <laughs> you, you know what we call that? We call that intense fellowship. Yeah. So you had some intense, 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 yeah. intense fellowship, yeah. and she said to you what? It was the day I started working on the truck that fell on me, and I got home that night, and she said, don't go back to work tomorrow. Let today be the last day. Let's sell the business and go into full-time ministry. And she just kept on and on and on until I until that blew up, and I slammed my fist, said, leave me alone. And she stood up and literally, she was seated next to me. I was sitting at the head of the table just like this. And she stood up from that spot, 
put her finger on the end of my nose and repeated to me three times, Bruce Fanetta, what is it going to take for a year of beating and, and wow. going to ministry? Okay. And then one of the bedrooms slammed the door. Okay, yeah, wow. I've done that a few times in my life. <laughs> okay, so then you, um, you, you went ahead and went to work. And what kind of work was it? You worked on diesel. Diesel repair. So this was like an 18-wheeler. This was. Yep. And what was going on that day? It had a leak, so I'd, I'd taken it apart that day, Tuesday. We worked on it Wednesday, went back Thursday, the day of the accident. Finished it up to the point it was running and to test the repair. That's what I was called in to fix the engine. The truck wasn't all back together, but the engine was done. So it's running up to temperature. I put my tools up away in my big service truck that I carried all my tools in. I looked at the clock and it's just about time to leave. And the guy came up and tapped me on the shoulder and he said, said, We come look, look at one, one more thing. thing. Uh, and so um, it was, um, I asked you this earlier, but it was, it was jacked up, right? Yeah. But you said it really wasn't jacked. It was jacked up, and, it, and a jack is simply a lifting device. Right. It's not a holding device. So it should be the proper way to do the procedure would be jack it up, put a jack center, some block in there, let the jack back down so all the weight's on the jack center block. It's a lot more stable and secure. Right. But that's not the way he had done it when he removed that passenger wheel. I saw what he had done, and I, didn't, I knew it wasn't done right, and yet I didn't uh, do anything about it. So okay, it's so not like it's his fault. Yeah, mm -hmm. but... Um, you scooted up under there? Yeah, so I went on a tool, the creeper, a creeper tool mechanics used to go in the vehicles, and I, on my back, laid underneath it, and that axle has got that five to six tons of weight. It's right above my belly. And I said to him, shut it off, because I was looking at the bottom of the engine, and the engine was right here above my head. And I said to him, shut it off. And so he went up inside to shut it off. That's when the truck shifted. And I saw something move, and I turned my head just in time to see that jack shoot out. And then that, the truck just fell through me, so there's a loud explosion noise, because thousands of pounds of weight, you know, it's a 10 to 12,000 pounds of weight dropping that far and hitting the cement. So 12,000 pounds yep. whoosh, fell on wow. you. Through the middle of my body. Yeah. And flattened to you to what? Like On the left side of my body, it was about an inch thick, and on the right side, about two inches thick, thinner than my spine, because L4 and L5 vertebrae were both broken. Oh my gosh, did all your ribs break? Uh, no, because it was in the soft spot, it just caught the bottom of the ribs. Oh. So basically between your bottom, your pelvic, and your ribs, and that hole by what, your belly button. But what it did right get was... Your what? Spleen, Spleen your gallbladder, pancreas. pancreas. I mean, yeah, every yeah. every intestine. organ that's in here, yeah. everything. That's Which here. is a very a lot of important stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What happened next? Because obviously you're so conscious. This is laying on you. The guy is probably freaking out. I call it the, the first thing I did was call to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, help me. I said mm -hmm. it twice, and um, then I looked down, and that's when I saw there's only this much space, and that really scared me because all I could see was the big piece of metal because the, the metal's like this tall. So it had fallen through me. So now it kind of looked like one of those cheesy magician tricks where the woman's oh. cut in half on stage because yeah. I could only see oh. from my ribs up and just wow. this little gap on each were side. Were you immediately in pain or were you in so oh. much shock? No, horrendous pain. I can't Instantly believe you were pain. awake to see it Instantly all. I can't believe you didn't pass pain. out. Ugh. Okay, so then he finally gets a jack and starts lifting yeah. it up on one side. Yeah, he jacked up in a very precarious spot, only place he had. I was telling him, don't jack it up there, and he said, it's the only spot I got. Then I could see my whole body mm. flatten. Like I said before many times, it was so surreal. There was nothing to compare it to, and the only thing I could think of, and this sounds crazy, but it, I thought of it looked a cartoon. Wow. When yeah. I was a child, yeah. child of cartoons. Just so and somehow you had enough upper body strength because you said you were really strong in your at the, upper Yeah, at that time I used to have a lot of muscles, upper body from yeah. doing heavy equipment and stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. So what happened? You tried to so pull I, yourself out. I was afraid the jack was going to slip, was going to fall on me again because the jack was literally the jack was like this. It was just on the edge of the jack. Oh, so I goodness. mean, it was just barely hanging on. <sighs> so I, I didn't want it to fall on me and hurt me again. So I was begging him to move me and he wouldn't. So I grabbed the bottom of the bumper and I dragged myself out oh, this my. far. And, you know, everything's broke in the middle, creepers dragging on the ground. And then I put my hands and I was going to do one more push because I saw when I got out this far, I could see if it fell, it was going to fall on my legs. Mm. And I thought if I could just Ugh. do one more push so it doesn't fall on my legs, it falls. And I tried to do that second push and my body just went into extreme shaking. I don't know. And for whatever reason, I was fixated on this side and I was watching my bicep and my whole arm really just shaking so bad. And I was thinking, I know in my mind, like, I could lift my body up doing a lot of pull-ups. And I can't even do, like, Mm. This isn't like half a pull-up weight. And I couldn't even do it, and my body was shaking. I just, my head started slumping to that side. I felt my all energy going because I was bleeding yeah. out. And at a certain point, my, they were trying to help me. The two guys showed up trying to help me breathe, manipulate the diaphragm for the uh, lungs that were collapsed at the bottom. And they were trying to help, but it wasn't working. And every breath was harder and harder to take. Oh. It was pain to take that next breath. And I knew one of them was going to be the end. And when that last breath, my heart stopped and my spirit left mm. my body, and I went up the roof of the garage. And what did you see when you looked down? Uh, the accident scene, everything exactly. Color, I didn't mention this earlier, but colors were brighter. Wow. Um, it, it was, I was looking from above brighter. Everything was brighter and just watching. And I didn't even know that was me under the truck. I was just up there. And what were you feeling? 
This is for anybody that has lost a loved one. Anybody mm -hmm. that's lost a loved one, if they're a Christian, please do not feel bad for them. I went up to Sicily, and it's the peace that I've been searching for my whole entire life. Mm -hmm. I did not want to come back at all. It was words, I don't have words to say how amazing it was, but mm. I say this, I was having a party by myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at some point, you looked down and you saw something yeah, so unusual. Much. What did you see? Well, the guy that I've been working with, they're not gonna do CPR because I have a chest injury, so they just, I'm dead. So they're just standing back, and he's on his knees above me crying and running his fingers to my hand and mm -hmm. apologizing, because he's known me since I was young. And uh, he was just apologizing to me, and I'm watching all from there, and I didn't feel bad. I was just watching it happen, but on each side of him, his name's Leonard, and Leonard's a little over six feet tall. On each side of Leonard was an angel, also on their knees, just like he was, but on each side awesome. of my body. But their heads were a couple feet taller than his head, so I know based on him, they had to be approximately eight feet tall. Yeah. Really big, broad shoulders, white, shining robes. Um, they didn't have wings, um, but just really big, big men. They had long hair with a belt, and uh, they just, one from the driver's side, he reached over and had his hands in the middle of his crushed flat, and the one from the passenger side. Same thing, I never got to see their faces, they never communicated, never spoke. But, but you just... saw them put their hands on oh, yeah. where the injury was. Exactly. Okay, because yep. later we're gonna find out that you have actually, there were five, places. Ar five arteries? Five places, three. Mm -hmm. five. I was cautioned to say this correctly. Three major arteries. Three major arteries. Severed in five places. Okay. So in other words, wow. two of them got chopped twice, I guess. Oh, oh my gosh, because I've always heard if you sever one, right. yeah. that you yeah. exactly. bleed out. Minutes. And they said the time that I, from the point that the truck was jacked up off me and I bled out, that would be about the exact time mm -hmm. that, that I should have passed. Okay, so you, you're you here. <laughs> so <laughs> what happened after you saw the angels? Well, so I'm watching the angels from above, and I'm like, oh, those angels are down there to help that guy. That's nice. Yeah. I'm just watching. And, and then this woman came in the wrong door. And she came up the driver's side of the truck. And I'm just going to stop right there and say, I spent the next year in the hospital after this. And then I went and spoke at the volunteer fire department that had come that night. And one year later, they, I surprised them. They didn't know it was coming. One year later, I was able to go around the room with 30 people and point out eight of the 10 people that had showed up to see the accident. So eight out of 10 a year later. And two of the eight, it was a red-haired lady and an older guy. And it was easy because she was the only woman, mm -hmm. or sorry, only red-haired woman. And he was the only older man with gray hair. Mm -hmm. They had come in the back door of the shop and come up the driver's side of the truck. And a year later, I said, why did you guys come in the wrong door? Everybody else came in the front door like I do for this main entrance to this place. Uh -huh. And they, it, because it had been a year, they are like, what? And they had to think about it. And then he's like, oh yeah, we missed the driveway, drove past, hit a second driveway, came up, and it was just a simple explanation. But the whole point yeah. was, the real Bruce was in the ceiling watching. Otherwise, Bruce was no heartbeat, so no pulse. He was oh, so he was dead. dead. Yeah. No, he was so dead. He yeah. no he was dead. No heartbeat, no And he tells him. And you still didn't know that was you? Mm -mm. No. Oh. Just but watch it all. He's going to figure it out, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, as soon as... So she comes around the corner of the truck. She gets down. She's feeling for a pulse. There was a, a, one of the volunteer fire department that said, all the guys who had been there right away from the beginning said, it's two ladies past. Mm. And she wouldn't listen. And she just kept feeling for a pulse. And finally, she said to Leonard, what's his name? He said, Bruce and I, and she started slapping me in the face saying, Bruce and I, come back, come back. I was up here, and the only way I can describe it is that name sounded somewhat familiar. <laughs> I didn't know it was my name, but I started creeping down, and then I went in wow. really fast, and it seemed like it came to the top. My eyes popped open, my heart started. No CPR, no medicine, wow. just this woman calling me back. An intense wow. pain. Yeah, and I go back from feeling the best I've ever felt to feeling the worst I've ever felt, and I just said, you know, Oh, a four-letter word for fertilizer. This hurts so bad, <laughs> and I don't want it at all. This hurts too bad. And I, I was, I guess, apparently talking to God when I wow. said, I don't want it. My heart stopped. My spirit went right back. As soon as I said, I didn't want it, my heart stopped. My spirit went right up in here, and I watched, and I was like, now I know that's me. Wow. And I could see the angels, and I know the angels are ministering to me, but I didn't want to go back there because it yeah. hurt too bad, and this felt too great. So I was just like, this is a lot better. Wow. And then a tunnel opened up. And people talk about the tunnel with a light on Maybe the end. Remember, y'all, we talked to people yeah. inside yes. the tunnel. Yes. So you start going up through the tunnel. It was great. Then we, I it interviewed excellent. an airline pilot, and he said it was just such a high rate of speed, but there was no wind. I just felt uh, momentum. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. like. Because he said, yeah. you, as a pilot, you understand that right. when you move at that rate of speed, you're going to. But noise. it was just like. Oh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. so you're going through the tunnel. You <laughs> yeah. think. Going to meet Jesus. You're going to meet Jesus. That's exactly what was in my mind. Going to meet Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And but, I could hear her call my name. Mm. And I stopped in the tunnel. And then I got sucked backwards. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> and then I'm in the roof of the garage. I look down and there's the angels. And I see her above me. And I'm like, I see it all. And my spirit came back in. And when I came back in that second time, I mean, I'm watching the angels. And I come back in that second time. And it's horrible, intense, intense pain. And I looked on my left for the angel. And I looked on my right. And I couldn't see him. And it totally scared me because I just seen him. Only, like, only with your spirit eyes. Yeah. yeah. You couldn't like, see with his natural eyes. Yeah. 
And we so can't was, see them. They're all they're all around us. Yeah, yes. but we can't see them. Yeah. Okay, so then are you going to stay? So it scared me because you, I couldn't see them. Yeah. And that's when God spoke to me when I was back in my body a second time, and He just simply, you know, He didn't sound scared. Yeah. And he wasn't freaked <laughs> out. He wasn't nervous, and He just simply calmly said, "If you want to live, you're going to have to fight, and it's going to be a hard fight." And it mm -hmm. took me about 2.2 seconds to go, no, I don't want to live, and no, I don't want to fight. My heart stopped. I went right so back. So you went back up again? Yeah, third yeah. time. <laughs> He's yeah. just going up wow. and down. Three times. Down. I was up three times. So then I was up there the third time, and the tunnel immediately was open. I got in the tunnel going through it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to heaven. And I'm about, it seemed like about halfway, and I could hear Bruce and I come back, come back. And I got sucked backwards out of the tunnel, and I'm back above. I see the angels again, which was good. I could see him again, and then, you know, I came back in my body, and it's just a horrible, horrible pain that it just, I, I wish I had words to describe the difference between even the spirit realm and, and this flesh yeah. better, but I just, there's not yeah. words. But, yeah. So I come back into this miserable flesh, and uh, it just, it hurt so bad again, and I'm thinking about wanting to go again, and then this woman, her face was right here, because I'm still laying on the creeper, so she was right here, and she said, oh, Mr., uh, you're on the verge of life and death. What do you have to fight for? Do you have a wife? Do you have kids? And I completely forgot about Lori and the four children because the pain was so intense yeah. that it never even crossed my mind. And how old were the kids? Oh, they would have been little. Like, we have four children in three years with the twins in the middle, so it would have been like maybe like a third grade, uh, a second grade in a kindergarten, something like that. They were little. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in there. And um, I thought of Lori and the kids, and then I was like, oh, my gosh, they need a dad. And mm -hmm. so she said, don't close your eyes. I was like, lady, if you knew where I was going when I was closing my eyes. She said, she kept saying, stay here. Wow. Don't close your eyes, stay here. And I was like, and that's, yeah, because every time I close my eyes, I am leaving, yeah. you know, so, but so you, I kept but my you eyes stayed. Open. And we, I, I said earlier, I'm sure the angels had to have stopped the bleeding yeah. mm. when they put oh, their yeah. hands yeah. over. Right. Because there's no way you can physically right. yeah. That. It's what you had mentioned. It, you should, the doctors say, if you have one major artery completely severed with no way to stop the yeah. bleeding, you're going to bleed out in however, sure. you know, eight okay. to ten minutes, whatever. But I had five, right? And then I didn't say this earlier, but it stretches out over two hours oh. from the point Because you had to be care flighted, and yeah. you're out in the middle of nowhere. So they take me by ambulance to a spot where the helicopter picks me up and takes me. Yeah. So it stretches out over two hours wow. with five arteries severed. I mean, it was just God put an exclamation mark on the, mm. on the miracle. Because yeah. I should have died in like, yeah. you know, five minutes, and it's two and a half hours wow. before they before they operate. So you get um, wow. you get to the hospital. Were you still conscious? Totally. Can you believe you say conscious through all this? Yeah. I was fighting. You you rush, because yeah. you're type A, you tell me personality. Okay, yeah. I see yeah, now. I was fighting. So you, <laughs> they rush you into surgery, and mm -hmm. they- the two night, Well, they, the first thing they did was they put me in a, a CAT scan machine. The helicopter lands, the, a garage door on the roof of the hospital. They wheel you in, and there's a CAT scan machine right there. They put me in it, and they, they took one round of CAT scans. And the first thing is the two night shift doctors started arguing, which really scared me. Meanwhile, the nurse are saying, what's your name? What's your birthday? What's your name? What's your birthday? Yeah. And I knew what my name was, and I knew what my birthday was, but I could not make it come out. I couldn't say yeah. a word. And they started arguing. I got scared, and they said, take them out, turn them. We're going to do another round. So then they were putting me in to do that second round. Everything just started going dark. And I knew the lights were dimming. Everything just started going dark. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh. I am dying, like, right now. Oh, yeah. And they kept saying, what's your name? What's your birthday? I couldn't say anything. But as everything dark, and it just literally, they say, in the write-up, it says that I zeroed out, wow. bottomed out. So I had very, very, very minimal blood pressure. So it's like, go to nothing. And then it just goes, and all the bells and whistles are going off. Right. And I turned and I said to everybody, if you don't do something right now, I am going to die. And they had been asking all these questions. I didn't really say anything. And then when yeah. I said that, they all just stopped, like, oh, he talked. Uh -huh. So then they yeah. took me out of the CAT scan machine, wheeled me around the corner, and I'm, the last thing I remember was a green mask coming down, and I was thinking like a mechanic thing. Finally, they just fix it, like yeah. fix it, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, they put me in a induced coma, operated on me for that week, on and off all week, and I was in a induced coma for weeks. And what did wow. they do initially? Because I mean, every, every everything was damaged. Yeah, they had to like. Do they took a lot. out 18 feet of your colon. Yeah, uh, small intestine. Small intestine. Mm -hmm. And a little piece of my colon. The okay. small intestine is a big, long. They call it the small intestine, but it's a long one. The colon yeah. is large intestine, but it's a short one. Okay. And so it's your stomach. So half my stomach was chopped off. The lower half of my stomach was gone. Stomach duodenum, small intestine, and the top part of the colon. Wow. And then what were they saying about your gallbladder and spleen? The, the spleen was crushed. Gallbladder was okay. The, the parental nutrition that they kept me on for all those months keep me alive to feed me, wreck my gallbladder. And that was later taken off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So eventually um, you get a call. I guess, did you get a call? or did, did I was told, somebody called and said, hey, um, we're going to bring a guy to the hospital to pray for you. So the doctors, I'm in the hospital, and I keep losing weight, losing weight, and I lost 65 pounds. And why did the guy even come? Like, did the Lord tell him to come? Yep. 
A guy who Did you know up. him? I met him one time. Okay. I and met him on vacation in New York. Okay. Yep. Okay. And uh, God woke him up two mornings in a row and said, fly to Wisconsin, pray for him, and I'll wow. do a miracle. And he wow. told his wife and the pastor of the church the first time, the first day, mm -hmm. but kind of said, uh, but then the next morning when it happened again, he knew it was God. And so mm -hmm. then he, he came, bought a ticket and flew and came to the hospital and prayed for me in the hospital. And when he did, literally I felt power. He put his palm on my forehead as he started praying. I don't know if any of you ladies have ever touched an electric fence. Yes. But you know what it feels like. And you know how you can hear that snap? Mm -hmm. You hear, uh, yeah, you, yeah, she's, the snap and then the zzz, right? Well, I heard the snap and it's like the zzz, and it actually stung. The, the power of God was so strong mm. coming out of his hand, it stung in my forehead. And I felt it go through me right to my stomach and it was just doing circles inside my belly. And I turned to God and I said, it feels like something's coming and coiled inside me. Mm. And so you, you eventually got to go home for a little bit before yeah. you were gonna come back for the next they, surgery. What did your wife attitude. and kids say through this whole experience? Because it's two and a half hours, the hospital's two and a half hours from our home. Our kids are all little. And uh, they're in school. They're in school. Mm -hmm. So she would put them on the bus in the morning, drive two and a half hours, spend like an hour and a half with me, and then drive the two and a half hours Wait, to be there wow. for when the kids got off the bus. Wow. wow. So she did that. And then some days she wouldn't come and I was there a lot alone, but they'd always come on the weekends. It was over, I spent, I spent over a year in the hospital. Wow. Wow, okay, so on one of the trips back, they're gonna do surgery, yeah. like, and yeah. the doctor's gonna do what? What did well, they tell you? The last operation? Yeah. So the final operation was, there was a rib they kept trying to make stick and it would never grow back. Uh -huh. And it just was clunking around in there and it was hurting. Uh -huh. So they were just gonna take that out, throw it away. I had a bunch of scar tissue that uh, needed to get cleaned up. It was doing adhesions. Yeah. My gallbladder got wrecked from the, just a bunch of cleanup work. Yeah. And so they went there in that last, but in between number four and number five is when that guy would come and pray for me. And my weight had, uh, I'd been losing weight, losing weight, losing weight. In fact, this is funny. So I'm losing weight, losing weight, and then because my attitude was so bad, the doctor said, if I send you home in between these operations and you get care at home, will you get a better attitude? And I said, yeah, send me home, send me home. So they sent me home, but, but then the nurses would come to the house, and Lori would take care of my wife, but then the nurses would come too, and they had to weigh me every day. And every day I'm losing like a little bit, a little bit. Mm. And then they, this guy comes and prays while I'm at the hospital. They remove another sunk, chunk of intestine. He prays, we go back home, and now I'm going up after he prayed. A little bit, a little bit. And the doctors said, well, there must, this is what they said, there must be something wrong with your home scale. Go buy another scale. Uh -huh. So my wife went and bought a brand new scale and our, it, they were right. Our old scale was off, but it was off the other way. It actually gained oh more weight. Wow. It actually gained more weight than our old scale. Oh, can I have the, the old scale? I, I make, <laughs> there's another dad joke I use and I say my wife uses the old scale and I use the new one. Oh my gosh. Okay, so then um, you start gaining weight and then you're going in for that last yeah. surgery and then tell everybody what happened. Well, the radiologist did some testing and they, the radiologist, he said, he's checking me out. I'd, I'd drink the barium, do an upper GI to look at the intestine. And the, upper, and the radiologist says, there's been a mistake made. And I'm like, mistake? What kind of mistake? He's like, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, it's my body. If there's a mistake, I want to know. He said, no, it's not a mistake in your body. It's a mistake in the records. He said, the records say you have 100 centimeters, but he said, then they just removed a little bit. So he said, you should have about, you know, less than 100. He said, but I'm looking at several hundred centimeters here. And I, what I don't understand is this is the best doctor we have in the whole hospital. He's the head of the trauma department. I can't see him making mistakes. And he's made it multiple times because he's been in you. He's documented the length of intestine. He said he's been in you four times. And the last time they removed another piece and pathology is saying how much they've got. He said, all the math adds up, but what I'm looking at, you've got several hundred. He said, I just don't, can't understand the mistake. Uh, that's when the light went off. It's like, that's why I was gaining the weight wow. because God did a miracle. And what he gave me back was wow. a, approximately half my small intestines. Okay. So, so I don't have all of them back. I've got about half. Okay. So, but you go into surgery. You have to tell this part. <laughs> yes. He cuts me open and I was told by some of the people in the room later that when they, when he cut me open and he saw because he's been in there four times. And it was not laparoscopic. He saw the size of the hole. It's a huge hole, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's been in there four times. He knew exactly what was in there. And all of a sudden, there's half my intestines back. They said that when he got into there and he saw that, that he threw the scalpel and turned away from my body and began to scream and swear and had a little meltdown, <laughs> gathered himself. He's a very professional guy. And those don't normally grow back. Right. It never. No. <laughs> it doesn't grow back, ever. The only case, because I've looked up, yeah. the only time they can ever, ever find any small intestine growing back is if you're a child, still in the growing process, something happens, and it might a little bit, because yeah. you're still growing. Okay, so um, then he turns back around. And just asked for another scalpel, went back to work like went nothing happened. Went back to work, yeah. Like nothing Crazy. ever happened. And did you finally um, 
accept the call into ministry after this? <laughs> yeah, I was still in the hospital when we started doing the paperwork to start the 501c3. Oh, wow. yeah. that Literally. is amazing. So the lesson you learned through all of this is <laughs> listen oh. to yes. your wife. Yeah, yeah she hears from the Lord. I do. I, you know, I preach that sometimes. Yeah. I do. Seriously, yeah. I do yeah. preach that sometimes. And but it, ladies. It goes the other way too, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. It the man hears from God sometimes too. Absolutely. So it's, it should be a partnership, right? Yeah, that's right. Both ways. Both that's yeah. right. How long have you been full time in the ministry? Uh, let's see, 2008 it started. So and, where are we at now? And how many people, I mean, mm. have been healed after you shared this testimony? Thousands. thousands. Wow. We've seen thousands. Of people I really healed. believe that right now there is just an anointing to believe God for healing for those of you that are watching right now, and you're just really like. Some of you just opened your mouth like, what? This is unbelievable. But, you know, the same Jesus that healed Bruce loves you Amen. and wants to touch you today. Would you just stretch your hands towards the camera right here, Bruce, sure. and just pray as you feel led and directed by the Holy Spirit. Whatever he shows you, speak it out. So, pray. Lord, we just thank you again for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. Yes. God, I thank you for all the people that are watching that are going to be watching this in the future. We lift each and every one of your children up to you. We intercede for them at this time, Lord God, and we thank you that you're always good, always loving, always kind, always faithful, and you are still doing miracles. You're still sitting on the throne, Lord, and we come to you with complete expectation. You said that we could approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace to help yes. us in our time of need. So you know every need that's represented by every person, not only around this table, yes. but by every person watching and will be watching. So we lift those needs up to you, Jesus. We intercede for those needs at this time, and we just ask that you'd release your healing virtue even now, yes. even now in Jesus' name. God, it's, it's all you. You're the healer. You're the great physician. We just entreat all these people to your care, the best doctor ever, and we ask, Lord God, that you would just release that healing virtue even now yes. to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus is the healer. You know, the Word of God says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. For our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Do we serve a healing Jesus, guys? Oh, yes, yes, we do. Just receive right now in the room where you are. Just say, thank you, Lord. He knows what it is. He, he knows what the issue is. We just ask you from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, we thank you for your healing touch. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen. Well, we are out of time. But I want you to remember that with God, even the impossible is possible. So place your hope in the Lord. Open your heart up to God today. He wants to do an amazing work in your life. He wants to give you peace. He wants to uh, just calm the storms or whatever's going on in your life right now. Yes. He really does. He really loves you so, so very much. If you're watching today and maybe you're facing, like I said earlier, an impossible circumstance, or perhaps you're feeling hopeless or battling fear, I want you to call that toll-free number on your screen. Our prayer partners are standing by ready to pray with you. Or, of course, you can go to daystar.com and click on prayer. Send your prayer request in. That way we pray over all of those that come into Daystar. I do want to thank Bruce for sharing his story with us today. We really just barely scratched the surface. And uh, here's his book, Saved by Angels. I love that. So many of you, we've been, we've been doing these near-death experiences, and so many of you have been writing me saying, keep doing them. It's so good. It's so encouraging. And, uh, of course, it's available now. For more on his ministry, you can visit him online at sweetbreadministries.com, sweetbreadministries.com. Be sure to share your thoughts on today's discussion by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing how Table Talk is touching your life. Thank you, Lord, for touching people today. Thank you for healing people. Thank you for delivering people. Thank you for bringing peace yes. to those who are watching right now. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you for that. Okay, we'll see you next time. Call us. Let us know what God did for you today. We want to hear about it. We love you. Bye-bye for today.